friends. Uh, today we're going to be talking about another bad girl of the Bible. Today is Rahab. Her neighbors called her a woman of the night. The Lord called her a heroine of faith. And a man named Solomon gladly called her his wife. Meet our amazing sister Rahab, a former prostitute who was decidedly bad for a season, but not forever. If you want to open your Bibles to Joshua chapter 2, 1 through 24, and chapter 6, 1 through 25, we'll begin our story. Her dramatic story begins like a James Bond movie, with Joshua sending two men to spy secretly on an exotic foreign location, 825 feet below sea level, Jericho, the lowest city in the world. Where did the men lodge when they arrived? The house of a prostitute named Rahab, it says in Joshua 2.1. Make no mistake, she was a woman who sold the use of her body. We can't clean this up. We can't wish this away. We can't pretend that she was just the local innkeeper. She was a woman whore, Rahab by name, it says in one translation. And she was chosen by God to be rescued from certain death and included in his son's family tree. No wonder we've loved her story for more than 3,000 years. News traveled quickly in Jericho. That very night, the king sent his own men to Rahab's house, building to the walls of the city near its gate. The king's men demanded she bring out the spies, but she was too clever for them, having hidden Joshua's secret agents beneath the stalks of flax drying on her roof. Yes, the men came to me, she admitted. Then she spun a tale about how not knowing where they'd come from or where they'd gone at dusk, when it was time to close the city gate. So Rahab lied. She did, but not like Sapphira, who lied to God. Instead, Rahab lied to the bad guys to protect the good guys God sent her way. Once the king's men took off, Rahab joined her guests on the roof, where they were hiding beneath long, wet stalks of flax, a plant used to make linen. To break down and separate the fibers, the flax was soaked in stagnant water, then laid out to dry. Imagine the smell, the sogginess, the muck. Ugh. No one would go looking for those spies under such a nasty wet blanket. Rahab rescued them in more ways than one, then confessed, I know that the Lord has given this land to you. Stop right there. How could a Canaanite prostitute know about the one true God? The only explanation is revelation. As Jesus would later say to Peter, this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but, my fa but by my Father in heaven. God had shown Rahab who he was, and she had embraced that truth. After summarizing what Jericho had heard about God's people, Rahab made the most shocking statement of all. In Joshua 2.11, she says, For the Lord your God is God in heaven above and on earth below. There it is. Your God is God. Unmistakably a statement of fact and a confession of faith. Rahab told these spies what they already knew. Your God is the supreme God. Not just an earthly God, but the one who rules the heavens above and the earth below. Her faith and her confession led her to salvation. So it is with us. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified. And it is with your mouth that you profess your faith and are saved. Romans 10.10 10. Saying it once is sufficient, yet I joyfully repeat my confession of faith whenever I'm with others who are speaking that truth for the first time. Yes, Lord Jesus. Again, Lord Jesus. Always, Lord Jesus. Yours and yours alone. Not only was Rahab a hero to God, she was also a hero to her family. She told the men, spare the lives of my father and mother, my brothers and sisters, and all who belong to me. This is faith lived out. Faith, thinking of others, putting their needs ahead of our own. The two spies were impressed. She'd already risked everything to protect them, so they rightly said, Our lives for your lives, provided you don't betray our mission. Rahab sent them on their way, then at their request, tied a scarlet cord in her window. Why scarlet, we wonder? Does it represent the blood of the Passover lamb, the sacrifice of Christ? Some commentators go there, but others do not. From a practical standpoint, scarlet was a common dye, and the bright color would be visible against the clay outer walls of her house. Rahab didn't know precisely what sort of destruction would befall her city, nor had the spies yet been told, but God knew. That night in Jericho, her salvation was assured. This is how God works. 
revealing his truth to those whose hearts are open, doing his mighty deeds through his people, showing his hand when necessary. If we have ears to hear, his voice is easily heard. If we have eyes to see, we see him everywhere. You know what comes next? Seven priests, seven trumpets, seven days, seven times around the city, marching without speaking. A silent army waiting on the Lord. The number seven, a reminder that their victory was already a completed work from God's viewpoint. At last, Joshua commanded, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Even in the heat of that moment, Joshua made certain God's will was accomplished and our bad girl was saved. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her in her house shall be spared. When the trumpets sounded and the walls came tumbling down, Rahab was still standing and all her family with her. What a woman. Let's linger on that last verse, which gives us all hope. Like this beautiful spring oasis in the Judean desert near Jericho, it's never too late to be made new. Joshua 6.25 said, but, says, But Joshua spared Rahab the prostitute and her family and all who belonged to her, because she hid the men Joshua had sent as spies to Jericho, and she lives among the Israelites to this day. It wasn't coincidence that, that the two spies ended up at Rahab's house of ill repute. God had plans for Rahab from before the beginning of time. Because of his generous mercy and boundless grace, the Lord also spared her father's household and all who belonged to her, the people that she loved, the people that God loved. This truth gives me pause. Would I beg God to save my whole family and risk my own life doing so? Yes, I pray for my loved ones and gently, I hope, speak truth into their lives, but I would, would I risk everything to save them as she did? The spies might have said, no way are we rescuing, rescuing your whole family, Rahab, just you. Because of her courage and strength, her descendants have lived in Israel to this day. Think of it. Thousands upon thousands of people tracing their lineage back three millennia to this brave woman who was faithful to the spies Joshua had sent. There is one name above all the others in her bloodline which is most dear to our hearts. When Matthew rolls out the lineage of Jesus in the first chapter of his gospel, we come to Salmon, the father of Boaz, whose mother was Rahab. Only five women are named among a long list of men. First came Tamar, who dressed as a prostitute to seduce her father-in-law Judah and proved more righteous than he. Now here's Rahab, next in line among the women named in the Christ, in Christ's family tree. Her faith is celebrated in Hebrews 11.31 and her righteousness in James 2.25. Take this and run with it. It isn't you who, who were that matters to God. It isn't who you were that matters to God. It is who you are in him and who you are becoming by the Spirit. Like Rahab, toss out that scarlet thread and say with conviction, Here I am, Lord. Save me. Now here's our discussion question. Transformed by God from harlot to brave heroine, Rahab is an inspiration for us all, demonstrating how we can leave behind our shameful past and walk forward in grace. Are there any Rahabs in your life? That is, women with a past who need to know they are loved by God no matter what their history? If you believe they're forgiven completely, how might you communicate that truth to them with your words and with your actions? I'll offer my answer first for what it's worth, and then it's your turn. With as much love as I can possibly pour into my words, I assure them of God's abundant love, mercy, and grace. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them, and they in God. And so we know and rely on the love God has for us. That's from John chapter 1, verses 4, 15 through 16. God loves the Rahabs of our world, so must we. With our eyes, our smiles, our hands, our lungs, our hearts, our homes, our lives, with everything. And that's the story of Rahab. Next week, we will talk about Jezebel. So now, united in the faith that we share, let's join in the Lord's Prayer to close. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. See you next week.